The third Democratic debate got off to a feisty start. Jabs were taken right out of the gate at President Donald Trump, Senator Bernie Sanders, and former Vice President Joe Biden. At one point, several candidates called for an end to hostility. Now, this we're, we're reminds everybody of what they cannot can I, stand about Washington, scoring I, points against each other, poking I, at each other, and telling each other that, that you're my plan, your plan. Look, we all yeah, that's have called a Democratic primary election. <laughs> that's called an election. That's an election. You know, this is what we're here for. It's an election. Yeah, but a house, a house divided cannot stand. <laughs> but who came out on top on that? Yeah. Jamal Simmons was at the debate. He spoke to several of the candidates. He joins us live now by Houston. Jamal, how are the candidates feeling about their performance last night? Hey, Sagar and Ryan. So good to be with you guys again this morning. Um, the candidates last night, they were walking around in the, uh, in the spin room. There were a bunch of them there. You know who was not there? The one person who was not there was Vice President Joe Biden. Uh, this is the second time I've been in one of these spin rooms. And it's the second time Vice President Biden was there. Uh, so it, it, was, it was interesting to me that he chose not to come. They're running a different strategy than the others. Uh, you know, there was a big moment that you just referred to with Amy Klobuchar and mm -hmm. Julian Castro went after Vice President Biden pretty hard yesterday. People were, a couple people like Klobuchar were upset that, that he did it. On the other hand, this is a question that's on the table. What is, is Vice President Biden really up to the rigors of this particular campaign? Not showing up in the spin room is not evidence that he is. Yeah, and so Jamal, like you mentioned, he's the well, he, that's the second time that he has refused to go into the spin room. Now, what what was the general atmosphere in there? Which of the candidates thought that they had done the best, and which of the worst? Oh, you know, the candidates all yeah, think that they were all right. fantastic. <laughs> Come on, <Yeah. laughs> nobody's going to say that, that, that they lost. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, one thing that happened, Elizabeth Warren last night, uh, she, you know, she came, uh, the Vice President Biden went after them pretty hard on the cost of Medicare for All plans. And I think the point that she made when she said, I've never met anybody who loved their health care plan. You can keep your doctor, keep your hospital, keep your, you know, your, your dentist. But, you know, nobody loves their health care insurance provider. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So I thought that was a pretty good rejoinder to that question. She's actually stayed the longest, Elizabeth Warden. She stayed in the room. No, that's not true. She and, and uh, Andrew Yang stayed in the room the longest. Yang was there. Like 17 people were left in the room. Yang was still talking to Jank. I know you're going to have him on in a bit. So yeah. They were going back and forth. But then uh, Elizabeth Warren was there. She was upbeat. She had the biggest crowd of people who were following her around. You can tell her campaign is, um, is on the ascendant uh, by the amount of people who are paying attention to it, at least in the press corps. Sure. So uh, you mentioned that Andrew Yang bite that you spoke to him last night. Let's take a listen to that, and then I want to get your reaction. Is this, is this okay. plan actually legal to be able to give $1,000 to 10 people? I know, of course it's legal. We have an army of lawyers who signed off on it. Uh, but you have to reflect for a moment that we live in a system where a billionaire can spend tens of millions of dollars buying his way on the debate stage, and everyone thinks that's fine. And then we're literally giving money to Americans around the country to do whatever they like to improve their lives, then people say, like, oh, is that legal? So it's not buying votes. It is, it is legal, um, but it, if you think about it, it's kind of ridiculous that we've gotten to this point. So it, Andrew's telling us it's legal. Uh, it, it, what, what are other people saying? Is there any other <laughs> any other response there? Yeah, there's, there, are, there are a couple different you know qualifications on this. Um, it's, a, it's a big idea. It's a disruptive idea. I think that's what people like about Andrew Yang. Frankly, it's kind of encapsulates the whole thing of the tech industry, right? They disrupt uh, the typical status quo with these ideas. The question is sometimes the disruption that they go through is reintroducing problems that people have had, you know, with politics or with business going back, right? So, for instance, Uber is not doing, uh, Uber doesn't have drivers that are unionized drivers, but the reasons we have unions still exist. So Andrew Yang says that he could spend this money. People are raising questions about using campaign funds to give to people for, um, for their own personal benefit, I think is the way many people in the uh, legal community look at it, that you can't spend campaign funds for personal use that would not uh, already exist. So there's a, real, um, there's a real question here about whether or not this is legal. Anyway, it's a big idea. People are talking about him today. And if you're the Yang campaign, you're happy because you made a splash. Right. And what, what's interesting is that the, the Yang campaign actually, right before the debate, right before he said it, sent out an email to reporters, and in the second line of that email it said, uh, this is legal. I'd never seen that before, uh, and when somebody was announcing uh, a policy, <laughs> I tend to, to sympathize with, with Yang. I think you, you can say that, look, this is a 
kind of a campaign stunt. Um, and if it works, it's going to benefit his campaign. Therefore, the spending should be um, good for his campaign. How did the uh, press react? But to, Ryan, to there Yang? is a reason why people stop giving. Ryan, there is a reason people stop allowing candidates to give cash to voters. Right, <laughs> right? right. Like we did that as a reform well, of the electoral cash, system. Trying to buy votes <laughs> at that rate. Yeah. yeah, but to Ryan's point, uh, well, how did the press react to that while, while you were in that holding room? Oh, I think people thought that it was kind of a, oh, this is interesting. Like, it's kind mm -hmm. of a stunt. Can you do this? I don't know. I don't know. There wasn't a lot of, there wasn't a lot of deep diving into it. I think by that point, we also then got into some of the next, you know, the fights with Castro, which were, which were, which were much bigger. Yeah, well, I know that Bernie Sanders also had quite a moment with uh, Joe Biden. Let's take a listen to that, and then we'll come to you for right afterwards. Well, I think we made the distinction. Um, you know, Joe voted for the war in Iraq, which turned out to be one of the great foreign policy disasters in the history of this country. Joe has voted for terrible trade agreements, NAFTA and PNTR with China, with cost us millions of good-paying jobs. Joe voted for the bailout uh, of Wall Street. Joe voted for a very bad bankruptcy bill. I opposed all of those initiatives. And I think it's not only the voting record, I think it's my vision for the future. Uh, I am prepared to stand with the working class of this country and take on the greed and corruption of the corporate elite. Well, that was that was quite a moment from Bernie Sanders there, Jamal. That's, he went much harder after him when he was with you and other reporters in that room than he did uh, on the stage. What did you make of that? Do you think he made his case last night? Listen, Senator Sanders is uh, very direct. Senator Sanders is always coming after the establishment. He's always poking holes, I think, in the way that the Democratic establishment or the national establishment has been doing its business. Um, you know, his voice was a little shaky when he got started. I think maybe he's not feeling so well. I don't think that tended to make him come off better um, because he seemed a little bit more frail last night than I've ever seen him. Um, but, you know, Bernie Sanders, he's not like a happy, jovial guy. He's like the guy that's going to, you know, uh, put something in everybody's Cheerios that nobody wants. And I think he did it again yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, and my sense is that uh – uh, his his campaign staff are probably disappointed that he delivered that line so well in the spin room, but not on the debate stage. And there was some hope among Sanders supporters that he would come out and he would hit Biden. He would make himself the alternative uh, to Biden as as he fades. Uh, but instead, he kind of waited until everybody had gone to bed and said it to reporters and, and a couple of cameras. Uh, no, no offense to the, the reporters who are extremely important folks there. Right. there. Uh, but it's just not the same as saying it to millions of people up on the stage. You know, the other moment that happened last night, it's worth mentioning, is the defense of Barack Obama that went on. I mean, people very clearly wanted to reestablish themselves as saying that they supported Barack Obama. They're on the side of, uh, you know, to thank Barack Obama for the work that he did. This is an important thing to remember. Texas Southern University is an historically black college. Most of the people in that audience were people of color, either black or Latino. So I think people on that stage did not want to engender uh, the, the ire of the people who were sitting in that audience last night. And I think they were all very clear to say they're for Obama. And now they want to do something more. Right. Well, Jamal, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Have fun down there. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I think the fun's over, but we're headed back home. I'll see you on Monday. <laughs> see you. See you all. <laughs> all right. A new College Pulse poll is out. It details what university students thought of the candidates' debate performances. Co-founder of College Pulse, Taryn Klein, joins us next to talk about it. That's coming up on Rising.